Okay, now that you know how to find the charge of the species, how can we determine what species is oxidized and what species is reduced? Because if we know that, we'll be able to tell what end of the battery is the positive end and which end is the negative end, what direction electrons go, what side to plug it in. Oxidation is the loss of electrons and reduction is the gain of electrons, as we've done in previous videos. Since electrons are negatively charged, a loss of these negative electrons gives you a more positive charge. A gain of these negative particles, the charge gets more negative. There are a couple of ways of remembering this. A loss of electrons is oxidation. A gain of electrons is reduction. Loss of electrons is oxidation. Gain of electrons is reduction. Leo the lion goes grrrr. I don't know if I'd be too terrified of that particular lion. The second way you can remember this is oxidation is loss. Reduction is gain. Oxidation is loss. Reduction is gain. The reason I like Leo the Lion Goes Grrr better is because it says loss of electrons is oxidation. This isn't as specific, it just says oxidation is loss, but it doesn't say loss of what. So Leo the Lion Goes Grrr is actually better because it's more specific. Spectator ions don't change charge. They just hang around and they don't participate in the reaction. Now for this reaction, in order to find out what species is oxidized and what species is reduced and what species, if any, is the spectator ion, we need to know what happens to the charge of sodium as it goes from being a reactant to being a product and what happens to the charge of chlorine as it does the same. So the first thing we need to do is find the charges, the oxidation numbers of every species in this reaction. An element by itself has no charge. Sodium is plus one, chloride is minus one. Therefore, because sodium went from being zero to plus one, the charge became more positive by losing electrons. Na0 undergoes oxidation. Since Cl2 goes from being zero to minus one, because it becomes more negative in charge, it's reduced. Now, if it's a Brinkelhoff, if it's diatomically written, and you need to identify that species as being diatomic, you actually can write it as being diatomic when you identify it as being the reduced species. If it's oxidized, then you'd write that for the oxidized species. We're going to do many more examples. Diatomic is usually what trips people up here, so we'll do plenty of examples. Now, there is no third species here, so there's no spectator ion in this reaction. Calcium starts off as plus two, oxide starts off as minus two. You can verify these charges simply by going to the periodic table. These are by themselves, they have no charge. Calcium starts off as plus two, winds up as zero. Its charge was reduced in value. Ca plus two's charge was reduced. On the other hand, O minus 2's charge became more positive, negative 2 up to 0. So oxide minus 2 is oxidized. Now you might want to ask, well, why don't we write O2 here, right? Isn't an oxygen diatomic? Well, it's not by itself here, you see. Oxygen is only diatomic when it's by itself. And since the change is happening to the oxide ion, which is in a compound, not by itself, we wouldn't write it as being diatomic over here. There is no third species, so there's no spectator ion. In this reaction, magnesium is by itself. The gold has a charge of, well, gold can either be plus one or plus three. Well, what's that three doing down there? If gold was plus one, we wouldn't have a, we wouldn't have a three down there. Gold three. That's where that three comes from, because nitrate has a minus one charge. In this particular instance, it's not important to get nitrogen and oxygen separately, 
because we have nitrate on both sides of our reaction. So we can treat it as one piece. Here, the magnesium becomes plus two. That's why there's a two down there. And the gold is by itself, so it has no charge. Now, I must repeat this. You cannot do this without first doing this. Doing so would be like brushing your teeth with a chainsaw. It's pointless and it's painful. The magnesium starts off as zero and ends up as plus two. Its charge becomes more positive. Therefore, it's oxidized. The gold starts off as plus three and it reduces down to a charge of zero. The Au plus three's charge was reduced. Notice that every time I identify the species that's being oxidized or reduced, I always refer to a reactant. It's always the reactant that undergoes the oxidation or reduction. It's always the reactant that undergoes it. It's always the reactant that undergoes it. The change happens to the reactant. The product is the end result of that change. What do you put in a toaster? How many of you said toast? you put bread in a toaster. The change happens to the bread. By the time it's toast, the change is complete. So whatever change is taking place is happening to the stuff you start with. And when you're done, the change is over. Now we do have a third species in this reaction, a nitrate ion. Therefore, the nitrate ion, whose charge doesn't change, is minus one. I cannot impress on you enough the importance of making sure that you put the charge after every single species. If you just put Mg, we have no idea of what Mg you're talking about. You need to specify the reactant. If I had just put Au plus 3, I'd have no idea which Au we were talking about. You need to specify. Same thing here. The term spectator ion means that it's a charged particle. That's the definition of an ion. There is a molecule, NO3, nitrogen trioxide. It has no charge. So to make sure that you identify this as being a spectator ion, you need to make sure that charge gets written there. Always self-check yourself.